Okay, good morning. Everyone, thanks for joining us. Uh, my name is Adam Wall. I'm the VP of Security and Surveillance uh, Vertical at Spectrologic. And uh, once again, thank you for taking some time to join us this morning. Uh, today we're going to talk about a, a slightly different architecture for storage in, in video surveillance, network attached storage, and how it can save you significant uh, amounts of money, uh, make your operations simpler and more flexible. So uh, before I jump into the product piece of the presentation, most of you probably don't know a lot about Spectrologic, so I thought I'd introduce the company and, and give you a feel for where we are in the storage market, the things we do well, and then we'll roll into uh, some architecture discussion and then some specific stuff about uh, our Verde product line. So Spectra, we are based in Boulder, Colorado. All our manufacturing, engineering, support, everything comes out of our campus there. You're seeing our main building uh, with the beautiful Rocky Mountains in the background. We're a company of about 450 people. We have been in business for 38 years. Actually, our CEO founded the, the business in his dorm room uh, at the University of Colorado. Uh, we have about 20,000 installations around the world, offices in the U.S., the U.K., and Australia. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, our support is all driven out of, of spec, out of our Boulder, Colorado headquarters. And that's kind of unique. Uh, a lot of IT companies will spread their support around uh, globally, whether it's in Asia or U uh, Europe. Uh, we find we can, we can serve our customers better by having our support people sit right next to the folks who build and design all our equipment. Uh, it really makes for a high level of customer satisfaction. Typically, uh, we are number one uh, in the storage industry for uh, customer support ratings. So who, do we, who are our customers? What is our focus? We go after the largest data sets in the world. We are a backup and archive vendor within the storage uh, industry. We're not a tier one or what we call primary storage vendor. We're focused on managing large archival or backup data sets. Our primary focus uh, verticals are, as you'd guess, data intensive environments. And that includes high performance computing, supercomputing, research computing, uh, broadcast, or as we call it, media and entertainment, uh, federal, and now video surveillance. Uh, you know, a few years back, we were looking at the market. We didn't think there was a lot of opportunity, but frankly, there is. And I'll get into those numbers in a little bit. Um, because we're in research computing, it brings us into a lot of universities. And that's uh, why we, we wanted to speak with you folks today. We have a ton of customers in the higher education space and the K-12 uh, space. And what's interesting about universities for us is all the verticals I mentioned before, Research computing, high performance computing, broadcast, uh, video surveillance, they're all represented at a university. This is a handful of our US customers. Um, actually, we've got McGill up in Canada. We've got quite a few universities in Europe and Asia as well. So we're, we're particularly uh, accustomed to uh, the needs of the campus. So why video surveillance? Why did we jump into this market? Well, we're seeing a lot of the same trends we saw in, uh, for example, media and entertainment about 10 years ago. They were transitioning from an analog world to a digital world. And then as the resolutions on camera, think about going from a standard definition TV to an HD TV, now to a UHD TV. We're seeing those same trend lines in video surveillance. And if you look at the last data point here, that's really what grabs our attention. This year, storage will grow by 48%. If you're in the storage business, that's a really great data point. But the problem is it really presents some significant challenges. And as we evaluated this market, we thought, you know, what are those challenges and how do we address them? Well, frankly, we came up with three core principles. One is scalability. You have to be able to scale your storage environment to meet the needs of the front end cameras, analytics, and compliance requirements as it comes to retention. And it's got to be something that can be done simply. You really don't need, you shouldn't have to have uh, you know, 10 years of IT experience to, to scale out your environment. So we think we've hit on that one. Usability. And that's just ease of use. How do we build something that is simple and easy to use, easy to deploy, easy to scale? And then affordability. 
Storage typically takes up anywhere from 30 to 50 percent of the security budget. Uh, and as we see compliance requirements growing, sometimes they're growing not doubling, they're, they're growing by 12x. Um, you have to have storage that's affordable. And we think as we go through this presentation, that's really why we came at this with network attached storage. It satisfies all three of these core principles. You know, if we look at the, this, the architecture categories that we've typically seen in, in the surveillance and security market, you know, you're all very familiar with direct attached storage. That's a server with some, some storage array built into it, and it works great. You can load your VMS application on there. You know, if you've got a small environment, you know, 10, 15 to 50 cameras, it works very nicely. When you start to scale out from there, you start running into challenges. It becomes much more expensive. You know, the price point we're typically seeing per gigabyte is about 50 to 60 cents in this category. iSCSI SAN, this is kind of the de facto storage model for uh, the, the larger enterprise applications. It works. It's a very uh, effective uh, architecture, but it has a couple of challenges. It's expensive. It can range anywhere from 40, 50, 60 cents to over a dollar a gigabyte. And it does require some, some serious networking, storage, and uh, IT administration skills. So it, it is, like I said, it works, but it does have those challenges. The network attached storage is much simpler, and I'll go into the architecture in the next few slides. It scales easily. It's very easy to use. Frankly, if you can click a mouse, you can, you can install a, a Spectra NAS box, and it's very cost effective, as you'll see in a few minutes. It's not complex. Uh, you can scale your bandwidth, your storage requirements. Creating pools for storage for different camera sets is very, very simple. You're not managing runs like you are in, a, in an iSCSI environment. So, so let's take a look. So as I said, scalability. We started at 48 terabytes, and then we scaled to 7.1 petabytes in uh, 7.1 petabytes. Excuse me. We can do multiple RAID options. And as I said earlier, it's really, really easy to use. And here's the, the affordability piece. Our typical street price is seven and a half cents a gigabyte. So how's this look? How do we what's the architecture look like? Well, I've got some cameras and an NVR. On my NVR I'll I'll put a couple days worth of storage for live playback and live video recording. And then I'll archive using the VMS archive function to our Verde NAS. So I'm going to point that NVR and set up Let's take a 90-day retention model. I might have three days of storage up on my NVR at, say, 60 cents a gigabyte. And then the remaining days, four through 90, are going to be on my Verde NAS archive box at about 7.5 cents a gigabyte. As my environment grows, I'll simply just add some more drives to that Verde box. If it grows beyond that box's capacity, I'll just add another one. Very, very simple. Very simple to, to grow this out. So once again, we can start very small, and we can grow to very, very large. Now, it doesn't require any significant IT skills at all. So once again, we're leveraging the VMS applications archive function. Virtually all enterprise applications have that function. We're leaving a few days up on the recording server, and then we're archiving down to Spectrum to our Verde NAS box. We can do some interesting things beyond that point as well for additional tiering that I'll talk about in a few minutes. So what's this look like for the user experience? So if I go to my next page, we're going to use Milestone Expertech Corporate here and show you what it looks like as we pull video back from the live database and then the archive database. The recording a little muffled, and I apologize for that. I'm working off a laptop in, the, in a hotel, so I'm, I'm traveling today. But we do have the link embedded in the GoTo, so you can kind of pull it up in your own laptop and, and or your own uh, environment and listen to it if you can't hear it exactly. But I'll kind of I'll go through it as we uh, once we finish. So, without further ado, the thin black bar within the recording is a delineation in the system between the live and archive recording databases. 
When the blue bar is on the right of the black bar, you are looking at the live recording database. When the blue bar is on the left side of the black bar, you are viewing recorded content in the archive database. As demonstrated here, there is no delay or extra steps needed to view and play back your recordings in the archive database directly from Verde. In case you didn't hear it, basically what we were seeing there was video being pulled back from the live archive and then streaming back from the archive database. And, or live, let me say that again, I'm sorry, the live recording database and then to the archive recording da database. You don't see any delays. So it's almost seamless to the end user. So now you've got this really effective tool for cutting costs at, at, at your top level. I can have one, two, three, four days at my recording server level at 60 cents a gigabyte for that really fast playback. And then I can push everything back down to Spectra, Verde, NAS for, you know, seven, eight cents a gigabyte. So there's real significant cost savings there. So let's talk a little bit the, about the product um, itself. I've gone through this. I think we're hitting on all those, those elements, affordable, scalable, simple. Uh, so as I mentioned, we're gonna we're gonna scale from 48 terabytes, which is a 2U box, out to 7.1 petabytes, and you're seeing that in that rack there. Uh, it's NFS and SIFS compatible. We can do something interesting here. I've been talking about archive a lot. We use what we call archive drives, SMR drives. They're specifically built for sequential data flow or, or workflow. If you think about video surveillance, that is the ideal application for a sequential disk drive. Basically, video comes in, it gets stored, and then it gets deleted. There isn't a need for a lot of random access, random uh, reads and deletes and so forth. So it's a really great way to cut costs and, and satisfy the requirements of a, a video surveillance environment. But if your environment changes, your needs change, we can put enterprise SAS drives in there that are more flexible for more random reads and deletes, or if you really need some horsepower in there, we can put flash drives in and give you a lot of speed. So this Verity NAS box is extremely flexible from that perspective. You know, we look at our feature set here, and you're probably thinking, there's not a lot of features on here. And you're right, we don't put a lot of features in. We have snapshotting and, and replication. We can also do some interesting DR copies to cloud or spin down disk, and we can do tape out. The reason we keep it simple is one, to drive down costs, and two, you've already paid for most of the feature sets in your VMS application. Why pay for them again? I mentioned simplicity earlier, or how simple this is, and we call it usability. Honestly, if you can click a mouse, you can, you can set this box up in less than 30 minutes and have it running in production. You're creating names for your, your camera pools, what percentage your high watermark is, how many terabytes per pool, performance is just a slider that you move, you select your protection level, click, 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 and you're done. You can manage this from your smartphone if you need to. So very, very simple, very quick to deploy, very quick to scale out. So I mentioned earlier some tape out and some other functionalities. Our Verity NAS has a feature set in it called Network File Interface. So it speaks to a, our other pro, uh, this product called Black Pearl. Black Pearl is essentially a gateway that allows you to create copies to either the cloud or to digital tape or something else we call spin down disk. Why would I do that? Well, if I'm under really heavy compliance requirements that having a second copy protects my organization from uh, compliance issues, whether it's government or could be internal compliance, I can create a very, very low cost uh, secondary copy on tape. What if I need portability? I might want to put a copy on tape and move it physically or put a copy in the cloud where someone else can grab it. So we build in this really unique functionality that allows you at some point, if your requirements change, whether it's second copy or you could even be looking to extend your retention just down to an even cheaper tier of storage, which is dig digital tape. And you're usually at about two cents a gigabyte there. So we give you some neat functionality, and, and uh, 
down the road, those two boxes will probably combine into a single box. So we'll have that functionality built in. So it's kind of a belt and suspenders. You've got a very low-cost archival tier with Verde NAS. But if you do need in the future some really long-term retention or a second copy or a copy that you can move, we've got that built in for you. So real quick, a uh, couple of uh, case studies here. Uh, this is an agricultural research facility. Um, we were working with one of our partners, ONSSI, with our Ocularis product. Started out very small with them, just some, some small archiving. Um, and what's, what's interesting is, is the system has continued to grow over the last three years. I think now we're out to about 700 terabytes of storage. And we're looking to push this solution out to all their locations now. Um, they like the functionality. They like the fact that it's very, very inexpensive. And they love the fact that it's really easy to deploy because a lot of these sites are not going to have dedicated IT people. Now, this is a very well-known East Coast university. I uh, can't use their name, but um, they had an interesting challenge. Their police department had a lot of forensic evidence that they wanted to retain for long periods of time. Uh, they were keeping about 20 terabytes up on uh, their primary storage tier, which is very expensive. More importantly, they wanted to get it in a spot where it basically kind of isolate it and create a, a couple of archives so that they could continue to add to it as they needed. So we put in two small Verde NAS boxes, two U boxes, uh, sitting behind American Dynamics uh, Video Edge. And essentially, they are uh, putting their long-term evidence hold into this environment. And we'll continue to do so, and we'll simply grow it out as their needs uh, uh, change, or continue to grow, I should say. And why us? Well, they were able to do multiple copies of the same evidence, um, administrate, basically create some administrative uh, security so that uh, they could manage who could see that. And of course, the ease of use, affordability, and, and and highly secure. So it was a great great win for both of us. So here's a quick look at our VMS partner ecosystem. When we bring in a new partner, our process is, for example, uh, we just tested Salient. We bring in Salient, we, we put their product into our lab, and we spend about three weeks testing it across all our product lines, all our functionality, and then we produce uh, test results and best practices. So we continue to add partners to our environment. If you're using a VMS currently that you don't see there, let us know. We'll go ahead and test it for uh, functionality, performance, and compatibility. Generally speaking, we've gotten great uh, uh, performance out of all our partners. Uh, they all kind of act a little bit different, but at the end of the day, we, we are able to provide that secondary archiving tier behind all of these applications. And our, 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 as I mentioned, our, our pool of partners will continue to grow as, as our business grows. So that's the end of my presentation. Are there any questions, comments that I can help you with? Hey, Adam. This is, this is Graham. Um, oh, hey, Graham. A couple, a couple that came in. Um, uh, one of them is, why the, how do you guys get your storage uh, so much less expensive than others? Well, I, a couple of things, that's a great question. There are a couple of things that in the presentation I'll, I'll, I'll reiterate and link back together. One is we're, our archive drives, we're using uh, what we call shingle magnetic recording drives. They're a drive designed specifically for sequential data flow. Um, they don't have a lot of, they're not designed for random deletes primarily. That's one of the challenges they have. But they fit beautifully into a video surveillance environment. So it's a very purpose-built drive, and it, 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 because it's not a random access type drive, it's, it's a lower cost drive, and it allows us to, to either create a, a video surveillance archive, or we use it a lot in media and entertainment as well, where it, basically people are storing video that they'll never delete. So uh, it's kind of a single, almost a, not a single purpose drive, but um, it's, it's designed for a couple of very specific workflows, and it captures a very, very low cost uh, for us. The other aspect of this is, you know, as I mentioned, like our feature set. We don't put a ton of features into our box because, frankly, um, you know, if you're, whatever VMS application you're running up front is going to do a lot of that work. So rather than build a product that's super feature-rich 
and try to wedge it into an environment that doesn't need those features, we went the opposite way. We built a product without a ton of features because we know our partners are providing really the feature sets you want. And that allows us to drive our costs down. The other thing is by building it really simply, it, it drives down the cost of support. So those are really the three major aspects of it. It's kind of the feature sets, the drive we chose for this particular workflow, and then, of course, you know, keeping it simple helps us keep uh, our support costs down. And one other question that uh, this one actually just comes up a lot in normal conversation. I thought it might be good for you to hit on this too. Is uh, how does this? Uh, how do we compare to the cloud? I guess. Well, I think there's, there's a couple of ways to look at the cloud in, in terms of what, what benefit are you looking for from the cloud. So if it's just purely storage, um, I really don't see much of a play with the cloud in this environment, simply because um, the cost of the cloud, there are a lot of costs associated with it that people don't initially factor in when they start investigating uh, cloud storage. If you think about, you know, how do I get my, my content to the cloud and back. Well, that, that requires bandwidth, and bandwidth costs money. Um, what are my monthly costs in the cloud? What does that you know per gigabyte cost look like? If it's a penny and I have a 12-month hold on my, my content, then it's really 12 cents. What does a second copy cost? You know, um, what does it cost to retrieve my video? What's the SLA on it? So there's a lot of aspects to just simply a storage play in there. That I think you know I, we can pretty much show a six to seven month ROI over the cloud. Yes, it's simple to use, but we're simple to use as well. Now, if there is one area where I think the cloud makes sense, and that is if you're looking for applications to go along with your storage, for example, within evidence management, if you're looking for redaction, uh, GPS coverage, uh, you know, uh, metadata management, a lot of additional feature sets that the cloud can pro provide, sure, it might make sense, but really do a lot of research into what that long-term cost model is um, and compare it to doing it yourself in your own data center. Uh, I, I, I get the ease of use, particularly in law enforcement, but at the end of the day, you know, some of this video you may be keeping for multiple, multiple years, and there's a long-term cost associated with that. So, you know, in those instances where there's a lot of value add in the cloud, I think it, there can be use cases that make sense. But when it's just a pure storage play, wow, um, the, the the cost model just doesn't uh, bear up to, to scrutiny, frankly. So um, while I have a, just the one last, uh, I introduced myself. I neglected to introduce Graham Stoner and Ryan Moriarty. They both work on my team. Graham manages the eastern half of the U.S. and Ryan manages Canada and the western half of the United States. Uh, is that our last question? I believe that was the last one we have from the peanut gallery, yes. Okay, great. Well, once again, thank you. My contact information is right here. If you have any questions, please give me a call, shoot me an email, uh, send up some smoke signals. Uh, we're happy to help. Thanks for joining us.